Hi everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on partial differential equations. And in particular, we're going to see how we can apply the method of Laplace transforms to solve partial differential equations. In particular, the following problem. Okay, so in this um, exercise, we've got a one-dimensional wave equation. The subscripts mean partial derivatives. Uh, w here depends on x position and time t, and w might represent, for example, the deflection of a string from its equilibrium position, which is the x-axis. Now, um, in particular, this uh, problem involves a semi-infinite uh, string. Now, the end of the string is at x equals 0. You can see here that um, the string or well, the deflection of the string is governed by some suitable function g of t. As we as x goes to infinity, the deflection of the string goes to zero, and the string is released from rest and lies on the x-axis. So there's a couple of extra conditions. When time t equals zero, the basically the string lies on the x-axis or the, the positive x-axis and the string is released from rest. So this derivative here is 0 at time t equals 0. Okay, so in other videos I have discussed how to solve ODEs and associated initial value problems by Laplace transforms. But let me just run through um, the method. Okay, you start with a, a PDE and some associated conditions. You transform the PDE and produce a transform problem, which is essentially an ODE. You solve that for the transform of the solution to the original problem, which I'm denoting by W bar. Then you transform everything back via this inverse transform and you recover the solution to the original problem. Now I have discussed this in other videos, but let's just quickly uh, go over it again. The Laplace transform of a function of two variables with respect to T. I'm going to denote by a capital letter with a bar over it just because lowercase w and uppercase w look a little bit alike when I write them out. It's an integral transform. Uh, transform. You take this, multiply through by an exponential and you form a improper integral. Now one thing that's very important for uh, transform or Laplace transform techniques and differential equations are these transform of derivatives. Okay, and I've spent a previous video proving these. The first and second are just uh, you prove them by integration by parts and the third and the fourth you can prove by using Leibniz rule for differentiating it under the integral sign. Okay so let's see how we solve this problem using this this uh, I guess algorithm if you like. Okay so the first step is to transform both sides of this partial differential equation. So let's consider the following. Okay, and what we're going to do is apply transform of derivatives to both of these. So TOD means transform of derivatives. Okay, so on this one, remember we're taking the transform with respect to T we'll get the following and for this one well that's just the second derivative of this okay so that'll be my left hand side and on the right hand side it's just the following. Okay, all right, so what we're trying to do here is produce a transform problem, which is an ODE. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's, in, let's try to uh, simplify these um, exp or expressions or terms via what's up here. We well, can see here, this is zero, and this is also zero. So these terms on the 
left hand side are going to disappear. So now our initial conditions or ICs give the following. Now let's actually let's uh, they'll disappear. Let's move that over to the other side. Now I'm just going to drop off the uh, argument just for to save a bit of space. Okay, so now we have a PDE where only one derivative is present, the second order derivative. And so really this, this is just an ODE. Okay. Now the dash or the double dashes here means differentiation twice with respect to x. Okay, so we have essentially produced a transform problem, which is uh, essentially an ODE. We want to solve now for uh, w bar. Okay? So how do we do that? Well, remember the differentiation is with respect to x, so we can uh, kind of assume that the s here is a constant. So solving this is uh, achievable via the solution methods for second order homogeneous ODEs with constant coefficients. And th these, these kind of problems you would see in a first course in, in differential equations. Okay, so how do you solve those? Well, you write down a characteristic equation, which is a, polyno a second order polynomial quadratic, and you look at the roots, so the roots real and equal, real and unequal, or are they complex? And depending on which form they are, you can um, build your solution. Okay, so let's, let, let's run through that. So this has a characteristic equation, lambda squared minus s squared equals zero. So solving for lambda, but s is positive here, oh, we get the following. So we have real and unequal roots. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the solution to this problem is a linear combination of uh, exponential functions. W bar has the general form here. Now remember W bar is a function of two variables. Usually if you're solving ODEs you would have, this would be uh, some um, you know, real, uh, some uh, constant, this would be another constant. Okay, but because um, we've treated s like a constant up here and w bar is a function of two variables, really what we should have here are coefficients that are functions of s. Okay, so this is the general solution then to this problem here. How do we determine a of s and b of s? Well, we can get them through the remaining conditions associated with our PDE. Okay. So once we have uh, 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 narrowed down our w bar, we can invert it and get w. Okay, so let's uh, label these. Uh, say star. What we would like to do is determine a and b, which may depend on s, from star. Okay, so you can see up here these uh, conditions are in terms of W or little w. What we would like to do is have them in terms of W bar, the, the transform of little w. So, so how do we do that? Well, let's look at the limit of this. Okay, now just from definition of, of the transform of little w, this is the following, 
And now if I move the limit inside the integral sign, I get the following. And what is this? Well, from our limiting condition up here, we know that this must be zero. So the inter integrand is zero, so the whole expression must be zero. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, if I go up to this expression now, let's call this um, double star. And take the limit as x goes to infinity, we know that it, sh it, it must equal zero. So what does this mean? Well, this will go to zero because s and x are both positive, so this, this will go to zero. But this will only go to zero if a is zero because the exponential goes off to infinity. Okay? Okay, so things have simplified a little bit because that term now disappears. Okay, so how do we get b of s? Well, we haven't used this condition yet. So let's apply that and we'll hopefully get b of s. So this condition in terms of w bar is going to be the following. Okay, so uh, if we take the transform of both sides, then we'll get something like the following. Now, we don't know what little g of t is, but let's just denote it's transformed by capital G of S. And if we look up here now, and we plug in, we know that this, this term is 0, and we plug in x equals 0, what do we get up here? We will get 0, that'll be 1, and we'll be left with B of S. So, these things must be equal. B is identically equal to G. Alright, so we have then the solution to our transform problem. Okay, so that'll be zero, that's just G. Okay, so we're now at this stage. So what we want to do now is take the inverse transform of this and recover the original or the solution to our original problem. So let's take the inverse transform of this and um, recover the original solution w to our problem up here. Now to compute um, transforms or inverse transforms, you can use the definition to, to calculate the transform. To calculate the inverse transform is a little trickier because um, you know you, you can use a table for that and it's very common. Um, to do it um, without a table is a little trickier because you need an understanding of the um, a complex analysis. So in this video I'm, I'm not assuming a, a, an understanding of complex analysis. But to invert this we can actually apply a theorem from Laplace transforms called the second shifting theorem. So let me run that past you. Okay, so the solution to our original problem is just the inverse transform of this. Okay, so the inverse transform, as the name suggests, sort of undoes the Laplace transform. Okay, so we're going to attack this using the second shifting theorem. So what is the second shifting theorem? We're going to write it SST. This is a function of s times an exponential. Okay, and this is the kinds of um, functions that the second shifting theorem can, can deal with when you're trying to invert the product. 
Okay, so in the, in this uh, context, a is, a is a constant, so it is just the following. Okay, so to take the inverse transform of this product, what you do is you t you find the inverse transform of this g of s, you shift it a unit, and you multiply it by this heavy side step function. Okay, u of t minus a. Now, in this uh, situation, well, we don't know what g of s is, and x can be thought of as this uh, playing the role as this constant a because we're inverting with respect to s here. Okay, so this is just u of t minus x times g of t minus x, where g of t is the inverse transform of whatever this big g of s is. Okay, and in fact, little g of t is in our original conditions. Okay, so we have solved our problem. Okay, so the uh, question is what might a suitable g of t be here? So I'm going to just give a little exercise for this. So let g of t be, say, the sine function for x between... Uh, Oh, sorry, sign of t for t between 0 and 2 pi and 0 everywhere else. What you can do is then write out this uh, solution in terms of this, this, new this, this, this particular function g of t. Now, just a little bit more about the heavy side step function before I, I sign off. The heavy side step function is defined as the following. Okay. It's uh, 1 to the right of um, A. It's 0 to the left of A. And in, in, in my presentations, I do define that the jump point. Okay, so what happens is this is let me this is like a, a profile of a step function. So what you would do up here is just tra transfer this over with a um, equals x, and then you can you know write this out in this piecewise defined form if you like. Okay. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting. Please join me for more presentations in the future where I'll keep on discussing how to apply the Laplace transform technique to a range of problems from partial differential equations.